All right, now to the other major story we have been watching unfold over the course of this afternoon and into this evening. Um, as you know, on the morning after the midterm elections, President Trump fired Attorney General Jeff Sessions, installed in his place a man named Matt Whitaker to be acting Attorney General. Uh, given Whitaker's previous record of highly critical statements about Robert Mueller and the Russia investigation, uh, and Mr. Whitaker's otherwise um, thin and sort of troubled resume that by no stretch of the imagination would make him a contender to be the Attorney General of the United States in any other circumstances, uh, because of all that, it's been widely suspected since that appointment was first announced that the whole reason Whitaker was installed at justice was to quash the Mueller investigation behind the scenes. With Mueller now reporting to Matt Whitaker, the regulations that govern the special counsel's office essentially say that Mueller has to run by Whitaker any major decisions about the investigation, including the decision to bring new indictments, stick a pin in that, uh, also any decision to make any sort of public report or any other major steps. Since Whitaker was appointed, we have in fact seen no new indictments from Mueller and his team. Now, if you're worried about the importance and the integrity of the Mueller investigation, if you're worried about the possibility that it might be shut down behind the scenes, given the importance of what that investigation is actually looking into, it's a little unsettling to recognize that if Matt Whitaker is basically throttling the Mueller investigation within the Justice Department, if he's blocking new indictments, say, we wouldn't necessarily have any way to know that. I mean, if Mueller's team goes to the grand jury and gets the grand jury to issue an indictment, and then Mueller brings it to the Justice Department, to Whitaker, to whom he reports, for Whitaker to sign off on it, and Whitaker says, nope, I'll take that, and he stuffs it in a desk drawer, how would we know? It's not like anybody has to make an announcement about that. How would we know if that is what's been happening ever since Matt Whitaker arrived three weeks ago tomorrow? That's why it is all the more interesting that tonight we are getting a first look at what might be Robert Mueller's notebook, his sort of working file. Uh, because tonight NBC News has obtained a draft criminal information, which is the kind, it's basically an indictment when you agree to plead instead of having a trial. Um, also a draft plea agreement, also a draft statement of the offense. All these documents appear to have been created by the special counsel's office, although we have no way of verifying that directly. Uh, the documents were reportedly created by Robert Mueller's office and sent by Mueller to a man named Jerome Corsi, a longtime conservative activist and writer who's been getting a lot of press recently for telling anyone and everyone that he believes he's about to be indicted by Mueller. Now, now I'm not, bi I will declare my bias, I am not inclined to believe anything that Jerome Corsi says at face value. After all, he is one of the world's leading proponents of the fabulous conspiracy theory that President Barack Obama was secretly foreign and not born in this country. He was therefore secretly never really president, says Jerome Corsi. Because of that past and everything else he's known for, um, Jerome Corsi says thing <laughs> is no evidence to me that thing exists or is worth writing down, just as a general mathematical principle. Um, but what NBC News has now obtained um, are apparently court documents that were prepared about Mr. Corsi by the special counsel's office to show him the way in which he was going to be criminally charged and the plea deal he could choose to sign on to if he wished in order to avoid more serious charges or potentially even any jail time. So these are the documents. They were obtained by NBC News reporter Anna Schechter tonight, who is a superstar. Um, and because we've got these documents, I can tell you this is a draft of the charge, the criminal charge, that the special counsel's office was offering Jerome Corsi as the one count he could plead guilty to uh, in order to avoid further criminal exposure. Um, the draft shows that they were considering bringing these charges in uh, U.S. district courts, a federal court in Washington, D.C. You see there on the left, uh, United States of America versus Jerome Corsi defendant. And the charge here would be one count of false Im uh, one count of false statement. Quote, on September 10th, 2018, defendant Jerome Corsi did willfully and knowingly make materially false, fictitious, and fraudulent statements in a matter within the jurisdiction of the executive branch of the government of the United States. To wit, the defendant falsely stated and represented to the special counsel's office, including special agents of the FBI, that he denied an associate's request to get in touch with an organization that he understood to be in possession of stolen emails and other documents pertaining to the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The associate 
he, excuse me, he's so, uh, Corsi also denied that the associate never asked him to have another person try to get in touch with the organization and that he did not provide the associate with any information about what materials the organization possessed or what it might do with those materials. So again, those are the false statements as outlined in this potential criminal charge. This is from the draft criminal information that apparently was provided to Jerome Corsi from the special counsel's office. Again, a draft, not filed with the court, but given to Corsi. Here's what we want to charge you with. Here's what your plea agreement would look like. I mean, if you want to boil down all the non-specific nouns there that make it sort of hard to read out loud, what this charge says is that Jerome Corsi lied to the special counsel's office and he lied to the FBI when they questioned him about his contact with WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks had started to brag that they had information that had been hacked from Hillary Clinton and Democratic sources. Roger Stone, who was associated with the Trump campaign, although he never formally had a staff position on the campaign, as far as we know, special counsel's office says that Roger Stone told his friend Jerome Corsi that he needed to get in touch with WikiLeaks about those stolen Clinton documents. When the special counsel's office asked Jerome Corsi about that, what they're saying now in this draft charge is that Corsi lied to them when he told them that he turned Roger Stone down. He said, no, no, I won't get in touch with WikiLeaks. That would get us all in trouble. The special counsel's office is saying, in fact, that is not at all the way it went down. Corsi lied to them. We get more detail in, in this document, which is the draft statement of the offense, which has also been sent to Jerome Corsi, which was also obtained by NBC News reporter Anna Schechter tonight. Um, so I can tell you what it says here. And I, I will tell you, thanks to NBC News reporting about the context of this case, I'm able to swap in some of the specific identifying information that will make this make more sense as I read it. So just so you know, the code here is organization one, that's WikiLeaks, person one, that's Roger Stone, etc. Quote, on or about September 6th, 2018, the defendant Jerome Corsi was interviewed voluntarily by the special counsel's office, including Justice Department prosecutors and agents of the FBI. At the time of the interview, the special counsel's office was investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election, including A, the theft of campaign-related emails and other documents by the Russian government's main intelligence directorate, the GRU. Also, B, the GRU's provision of certain of those documents to WikiLeaks for public release in order to expand the GRU's interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election campaign. Also, C, the nature of any connections between individuals associated with the presidential campaign of Donald Trump and the Russian government or WikiLeaks. Quote, Corsi was represented by counsel during the interview. At the outset of the interview, Corsi was warned that intentionally making false statements to the investigators was a violation of federal law. Corsi said that he understood. Quote, during the interview, Corsi said in the summer of 2016, an associate, Roger Stone, who Corsi understood to be in regular contact with senior members of the Trump campaign, including then-candidate Donald J. Trump, asked Corsi to get in touch with WikiLeaks about materials it possessed relevant to the presidential campaign that had not already been released. Corsi thereafter and knowingly made intentional, excuse me, Corsi thereafter and knowingly and intentionally made the following materially false statements during the interview. Corsi said he declined the request from Stone and made clear to Stone that trying to contact WikiLeaks could be subject to investigation. Corsi also stated that Stone never asked Corsi to have another person try to get in contact with WikiLeaks and that Corsi told Stone that they should just wait until WikiLeaks released any materials. Special counsel's office is saying in this statement of the offense that all of those were false statements from Jerome Corsi. Quote, Corsi further stated that after the initial request from Stone, Corsi did not know what Stone did with respect to WikiLeaks, and he never provided Stone with any information regarding WikiLeaks, including what materials WikiLeaks possessed or what WikiLeaks might do with those materials. And now here's the money. <laughs> Quote, in truth and in fact, and as Corsi well knew, after Stone asked Corsi to get in touch with WikiLeaks, Corsi did not decline the request, as he stated in the interview. Instead, he contacted an individual who resided in London, England, a guy who we know as Ted Mollock, uh, to pass on Stone's request to learn about materials in WikiLeaks's possession that could be relevant to the presidential campaign. Corsi thereafter told Stone that WikiLeaks possessed information that would be damaging to then-candidate Hillary Clinton and that WikiLeaks planned to release damaging information in October 2016. So we just got all of that tonight. Draft court documents apparently prepared by the special counsel's office and sent to Jerome Corsi basically to let him know 
what he will be, might be, could be charged with in terms of lying to investigators. Prosecutors also included this draft plea offer, which Corsi, in which Corsi would, would agree to plead guilty to that one count of false statements. And in exchange, they would agree not to prosecute him for other false statements he made to the special counsel's office and to the grand jury. They would also agree to not prosecute him for obstruction of justice or perjury, either before the special counsel's investigation or the grand jury or congressional committees. They would also promise in this plea agreement that Corsi, uh, if he went along, the prosecutors would, would support any recommendation to the court that he receive only a sentence of probation. They'd support a recommendation that he never had to spend a day in jail. Uh, nevertheless, Corsi now tells NBC News that he is rejecting this plea offer. But the fact that we've got these draft documents gives us all sorts of new information about what the special counsel apparently knows, including now we've got the documented fact from them that after Russian military intelligence hacked the Democrats during the election to try to help Trump win, Roger Stone, who was associated with the Trump campaign, directed this guy, Jerome Corsi, to go to WikiLeaks and find out what they had stolen. This guy, Jerome Corsi, dispatched a guy he knew in London to go do that. Julian Assange, of course, lives in an embassy in London. About a week after Corsi forwarded this request from Stone that somebody should go meet with Julian Assange, Corsi, in fact, reported back to Stone that WikiLeaks, in fact, had lots of information that was going to be damaging to Hillary Clinton. And oh, by the way, it will all start to come out in October, which it did. And the special counsel's got all that dead to rights. So again, this is not a document that has been filed in court, as far as we know. This has just been sent to Jerome Corsi, which is interesting. I mean, we'll see what happens here. This appears to indicate that the special counsel's office has found at least one bright link between the Trump campaign and what Russia did to mess with the election to benefit Trump. Congressman Adam Schiff is going to join us in just a moment to talk about what this means and, and the prospect um, that this indictment of Jerome Corsi has been prepared, but it hasn't been filed in court. Could that conceivably mean that it's being blocked by Trump's new loyalist appointee at the Justice Department? So we are watching this story develop uh, tonight. Just within the last hour, the Washington Post reports that the White House is very upset that President Trump's name appears in this draft court filing, and they've lodged some sort of protest with the Justice Department about that. Again, this story continues to develop. We will have Congressman Adam Schiff, incoming chair of intelligence, here in just a moment to talk about that. And actually, just since we got on the air, uh, a little bit more breaking news on this same story from the New York Times about what Paul Manafort has been telling the Trump White House. Uh, New York Times, just within the last, within less than an hour, has just broken the news of what may have led prosecutors to yank Paul Manafort's plea agreement. His communications with the White House apparently um, going way out of bounds in an effort to help Trump fight this investigation. We'll have that story for you coming up. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.